grown in Chile. And what's interesting about the Carmenere grape is that in 1867, a blight wiped out all of the Carmenere grapes throughout Europe. Now what's important about the Carmenere grape is that it's one of the six varieties that is in the Bordeaux blend. So fast forward to 1994, Chile entered a Merlot in an international wine competition as kind of their coming out into the wine world. And when they did... Where was that? Do you know? I do not know where it is, okay. actually. Uh, I would have to look it up. No, it's okay. I just... And um, the judges were tasting it, and they said, well, this is a wonderful wine, but it's not a Merlot. They did some genetic testing on the grape, and they found out that for 150 years, the Carmenere grape had been growing happily in the region of Chile all along. So France has since bought back the grapes and are growing it, but still, the Carmenere grape is only grown in a single variety format in Chile because of the longer growing season. And what does that mean, single variety? Um, so a Bordeaux is a blend of all the diff of up to six different grapes, but certain grapes can be done as just that grape. So anything you see, like a Carmenere, a Pinotage, a Pinot Noir, a Merlot, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and so on, those are one grape. Okay. And it, that's the only grape that goes into that wine. So if you grew a Carmenere grape in France, the growing season's not long enough for the flavor and complexity in the grape to develop into doing it on its own as a wine. And so it's blended into and with other wines, but it can't stand on its own. It doesn't have enough personality. So, yeah. long lost Carmenere grape. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, what do we have next? All right, well, this is the Cosa Palta tribute. And the Cosa Palta is actually a winery in Chile, and this is their version of a Bordeaux blend. So this Bordeaux blend has 50% Carmenere grape in it, 25% Cabernet Sauvignon, and I believe the rest is Merlot. So without looking at my cheat sheet, because we have lots of blends. So that's why we call it the Cosa Palta tribute, because it's their version of a Bordeaux blend. And then we go down the line to our actual Bordeaux blend, which has all six great varieties in it. So those are kind of the... This has all six? Yes, this has all six grapes in it. Well, let's try that. I made one. Now, how long does this stay in the bottle or in the keg before you... Um, well, this was a reserve, so it stayed in the barrel for two years. Okay. And this was done in 2014. And now when you see a bottle of wine and it says... Oh, 2014. Good. That's always the year that the grapes were picked. Okay. So the grapes were picked in 2014. We crushed, pressed, and racked the grapes then. And then it sat and we bottled it in 2016. So it's been in the bottle for about two years now. It's delicious. So it's had some barrel aging and some bottle aging. Okay. So. Now, how long do you recommend they stay in the bottle? Uh, well, we keep our sulfite levels very low. Sulfites naturally occur in wine, and they are act as a preservative as well. We keep ours to about 500 parts per million, which is very low for most wines. So we recommend keeping our reds anywhere between five to seven years before they start to, uh, until we can't guarantee their perfection. So okay. I've had some as long as eight years and they've been good, but I wouldn't keep them any longer than that just because of the low sulfite level. Now, how many people make these different varieties? Like, oh, is I there mean, a more popular one or a... Uh, well, this season, because it's Chilean season, a very popular is the Pinotage from South Africa, which is only grown in South Africa. The Carmenere and the corresponding Costa Palta Tribute are also very popular because those are wines that you can only get from South Africa or Chile. Um, our newest one is our Maximus, which is a blend, very Cabernet heavy, Petit Verdot, Cap Franc, and Shiraz is in there, so it's a very heavy, meaty wine. And our other newest little baby is our Cabernet Sauvignon Vignon done in Hungarian oak from Stellenbosch, South Africa. And the Hungarian oak blends baking spices, and it has a very... Wait, I just want to make sure I'm understood. These are South African grapes? Yes, these are from South Africa. We do two seasons, South Africa and Chile. Okay. And so this is from South Africa, the Stellenbosch region, which is known for their cabs. And this one has a nice smoky nose and taste and we'll try. Um, a little burnt marshmallow. Now, we bottled this a week ago. So it's undergoing bottle shock, which okay. is something that happens. The wines have lots of room to stretch out and be happy in the barrel. And then we shove it through a whole bunch of filters, put it through a bottling machine, shove it into a bottle and put a cork on it. And it goes, ah! <laughs> and so for about two and a half to three months, it, the wine closes in on itself and doesn't present its full body of flavor. Okay. So after about three months, 
it returns to what you've tasted before you put it in the bottle, and after that it continues to bottle. Each. Does the color change as well during the, the bottle color shock? It doesn't change. Um, for reds, does it happen for whites? No, uh, bottle shock, yes, it does happen for whites as well. All wines, it happens too once you shut it to a bottle. Okay. Um, I think that I remember there was a story about St. Helena winning the first thing for Napa over in France, and all the bottles turned yes. brown. And they were freaking out because they didn't know if they were going to be able to go into the contest or not. Yes. And the guy actually gave it all away, from what I understand. I, you know, I'm not super familiar with the story, so I can't confirm or deny that. But yeah, there's an interesting little movie. Yeah, it's called Bottle Shock, actually. Yeah. I just haven't, it's on my Netflix to watch list. I just, it's pretty good. Between they didn't teaching show. and working here, I, haven't, I don't have a lot of time for movies. So, I can understand that. Same flavors, but just very closed in on itself. We're going to taste a lot more minerals in that right now, whereas when we were tasting it before, we put it in the bottle, the minerals are kind of a back note, whereas now they're more front and center. So, just something to keep in mind when you're tasting our newest additions to the family. Okay, so now you said that you do South African and Chileans in yes. the spring? Yes. Is there a cycle all year long with different so growing periods? So, California, Oregon, and Washington. So, all behind us, you'll see all the California red wines, and so we also have... Wooden Valley, and uh, I can't find the other ones right now, but some from Oregon as well. Now, did the forest fires in Napa and Sonoma create problems for they you guys? They didn't really. Uh, most of the grapes are picked by then, so the biggest thing that happened was a lot of people's equipment got destroyed, but the winemaking community is very one all for one and one for all, so everyone kind of pitched in and helped each other. The only grapes that really got harmed were the ones that they were kind of waiting till later, either the sugars or the um, pH level wasn't right, or they were hoping to do an ice wine if it ever frosted, something like that. Those got smoke damage and confused. But most of the grapes were already picked, and all of our grapes had already been shipped over by then. So we were all set. Oh, that's great. Yeah.